Hello and welcome back to the series where I see if it's possible to beat Red Dead Redemption 2 with no guns. This is part 3 of, I don't know, probably 6. We'll see. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you haven't checked out the art parts, make sure to check them out. They'll be in the description below. Also, this is filmed live on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash lavishpoem5170. So if you want to see all this filmed live, um, make sure to go check out my Twitch. Um, but without further ado, let's remind ourselves of the rules. Rule 1. No firearms must be fired. If a gun is forcibly shot, then the mission is deemed impossible. However, if you are forced to have a gun in your hand, but you don't have to fire it, that's totally okay. And Rule 2. Bows, knives, tomahawks, and any throwables are all fair games. So without further ado, let's begin the video. Starting off the new chapter in our campsite in Lemoyne, our first mission has us going on a fishing trip with Dutch and Hosea only to be interrupted by some escaped convicts and Trelawney for some reason. And now our goal is to capture them. This mission tells us explicitly not to kill the convicts, making it extremely easy, allowing us to enjoy our fishing trip in peace. This mission has us taking a bored and annoyed Sadie Adler into town to run some errands for the camp so she won't kill Pearson. There is one shootout in this mission, although we normally can't use any of our usable weapons in the wagon. If we hop out, we can kill the raiders no problem, making the mission possible. Oh boy, another two-part mission. Alright, this mission requires you to get intertwined in this weird Romeo and Juliet style romance with... Ah, uh, you played the game. You know the ship between the Greys and the Braithwaites. Both stuck-up families that don't even know why they hate each other. Blah, blah, blah. So we are delivering love letters between these two and getting involved with a women's suffrage rally? What the fuck? This is all a long story. All that matters is there's no difficulties and it's possible. Alright, so this mission has us taking down an underground moonshine ring because fuck it, why not? This mission is mostly silent till it's not, but still not a problem. All the raiders die to my bow and tomahawks and Dutch loses to my expert horsemanship skills, making this mission possible. <sighs> Why do we ever listen to Uncle? In this mission, we rob from Leviticus Cornwall again. Not learning from chapter two, I see. Causing us to get chased down, go into hiding, and then finally finding a way out. In terms of the challenge, there was a lot of shootouts, so I had to conserve my resources. But otherwise, it wasn't too hard, making the mission possible. Finally, a good fucking mission. In this mission, we follow a tip from Lenny to go and raid a raider's household for whatever we can find. I chose to just set off the dynamite for the shootout and then take out the raiders. Also, with the last few that come front the wagon, um, just once again hop off and take them out and they won't be a problem. So other than those few hiccups, this mission was very possible. Okay, this mission is problematic since we have to help Hosea sell the moonshine to the people we took it from, who have us give it out to the folks of Rhodes for free. After getting attacked by raiders, Hosea and Arthur flee in the carriage, and this is where the problem begins. Yeah, remember how I said we can't use weapons we're allowed to in a wagon? Well, we're stuck in a wagon. And to rub salt on the wound, the game literally gives us unlimited ammo for our revolvers. Meaning we can't beat the mission by doing nothing. Believe me, I tried. It's the only way to beat it is to shoot my goddamn guns and kill the raiders. Making this the first impossible mission of the chapter. God damn it. Fucking Hosea. This mission is the large scale robbery in Valentine, which is cool and all, but would you believe this happened? Up oh, and I'm forced to shoot. Look, if I'm being honest here, I'm not sure if this is required. Editing lavish, let them know if it is. Okay, so I want to show you guys something. So it actually is possible. You just gotta go through and let your dead eye run out. So I replayed the mission to show it is possible. You don't have to fire a bullet here. So that's pretty cool. Just wait, wait, wait. That's it. Gets you right out, and then you can go ahead and use your knives or whatever you have. So yeah, that's how you do it. 
That's how you beat it. Thank you, Edding Lavish. So it is deemed that this mission is possible. You just gotta let your dead eye run out. So other than that, you just take your money for the uh, loan and you're good to go. Awesome. All right, this mission is actually a lot of fun since you get to commit arson on the Gray's tobacco fields and burn them to a crisp. This mission holds no difficulties for the challenge though, but as something nice that it does, it unlocks fire bottles in the fence's store, which is always nice to have. Okay, for this mission we are told to find Trelawney and find out more information about these bounty hunters who are after us, but instead, we find he is taken by them and our new task is to save him. This mission doesn't pose any new challenge, just taking out the bounty hunters and bring Trelawney back to camp and all is good and possible. In this mission, we are committing theft and stealing horses off of the Braithwaite's property for the promise of $5,000, which we did not get. This mission plays the same, just with no guns, making it completely possible. In this mission, the moron Micah leads Arthur straight into a trap by trying to make peace with the O'Driscolls only to get Arthur captured, and now we have to escape. The game is nice enough to not make us shoot our rifle and give us some throwing knives when we get out of the shackles. And those are enough to get us to our bag and horse, making the mission completely possible. This mission has us stealing money from the back of a wagon with Trelawney. This chapter really has a lot of Trelawney missions for some reason. This requires literally no killing to complete, so at this point it's free money and 100% possible. This mission has us walking straight into a trap, getting Sean killed, and us going into an all-out shootout with the Grace. The shootout goes as normal with the bow and throwables until this. Oh, I gotta shoot! No! I had to shoot there, damn it. Yep, and unlike the bank robbery one, I can't go past this. I tried already and it just kills Bill so you have to kill at least one of them. So this mission is impossible. In this mission we are just attacking the inbred Braithwaite's Manor and trying to figure out where they took Jack to. This mission is just one giant shootout that goes great until... Oh, I... Yep, another forced killing. If we don't kill those men with the dead eye, they kill us, meaning it's impossible to skip, making this whole damn mission impossible. Fucking two in a row, goddamn. Let's see if this mission keeps up with the impossible streak. In this mission, we get such a nice wake up call by Agent Milton and are forced to clear out Shady Bell for the new camp. Finally breaking the streak, this ending mission of chapter three is a piece of cake and we ride into Santony, prepared to start Chapter 4. Alright, so of 16 missions in Chapter 3, 13 were possible, making 81.25% of missions possible. Same as Chapter 2, finally. Meaning, is it possible to beat Chapter 3 of Red Dead Redemption 2 with no guns? No, it's not. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Also a reminder, this is filmed live on my Twitch, which will also be in the description, same as part one and two. But otherwise, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and see you in chapter four. Have a great night.